نحمده نصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين একটা ঘটনা এস্টো এস্টো পাকিস্তান a a surprising story in the sense that uh, he mentioned that adam alayhi salam he was deceived by shaitan in uh, paradise and in paradise he was not a prophet he was not inviting anybody he and his wife were there and shaitan somehow even though through five steps that we mentioned uh, made him disobey allah taala and that was the only time as per him shaitan could have an upper hand on him that means made him disobey allah and when he came down to the earth when he was uh, thrown to the earth by allah taala that means adam alayhi salam and he started the work of a prophet that means inviting his children towards allah after that point when he was an inviter he was the messenger of allah he could never be deceived by shaitan that was the only time in paradise number one point he mentioned and the other point he mentioned was his son uh, kabil you know who was filled with jealousy he wanted to marry his own sister uh, whereas his sister was to be married to habil so kabil got jealous and then he was living within the habitation where adam alayhi salam and his children were living but then he moved outside the habitation and when he moved outside he was all alone he was a prey to shaitan an easier prey for shaitan and he was easily deceived by shaitan and he was tempted to kill habil and that's why it comes in hadith something to the effect that uh, we should not live alone because uh, a muslim who is alone is like a lonely sheep for the for the wolf a sheep that is lonely is an easy prey for the wolf similarly a person who is outside the jamaat and today we will talk about jamaat uh, as being a protection from shaitan so a person who is outside the jamaat is an easy target for shaitan so uh, that's what i heard wallah allah knows best that when we are number one when we are in the effort of inviting others we are under the protection of allah and number two when we are in the uh, jamaat of muslims again we are under the protection of from shaitan and you know we are in a life that is transient rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said something to the effect when he was asked who is a wise person he didn't say a person who is learned is a wise person or a person who has earned a lot of fortune is a wise person he said that a wise person is one who near meaning continually remembers death and continually prepares for death that means he because death can come any time he prepares for death all the time so that death does not take him by surprise because it it is going to come number one and number two the timing is most certain even even the even though the event is most certain the time is most uncertain and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is reported to have said one day told his sahaba that 100 years from from today 100 years ago nobody of us were 
nobody living today were not alive 100 years from today. And nobody living today will not be alive 100 years from today, which is true on a macro level. But it is also true on a micro level is that each one of us can die on a micro level, each one of us can die anytime without announcement. And when Azrael Salam comes, he's not going to wait a single moment. No time will be given. How brief is the journey of life? It is like an ice cube in boiling water. It is like a candle against the wind. It is like an autumn leaf that can fall any time. I, I think we need to discuss after Dua if we want to make a change of time from um, 10, 10 30 in Bangladesh to 10. If, if you want to make it 10 p.m., if that would make it easier for others, it would be more difficult for me, but you know, 30 minutes would not matter a lot for me. So we can talk about that after Dua, inshallah. And uh, Shuja can uh, give his opinion later. So, so the last two sections in the previous presentation, previous week was causes people to forget the commands of Allah. And, and, and many times, you know, uh, shaitan overtakes us and makes us forget the remembrance of Allah. And then when we forget the remembrance of Allah, we forget his commandments and we commit sins. And as soon as we realize that, we should ask for forgiveness. Adam al-Islam realized that when he committed the big mistake, and he immediately, immediately he sought for forgiveness from Allah Ta'ala. That was the difference between him and Shaitan who tried to defend his action. I'm better than him, Adam Alayhi Salam. And then uh, the, the following section that we discussed was uh, the fate of Shaitan and followers will be in Jahannam. The fate of those who follow him will be in Jahannam forever. Unless, you know, before death, a person makes, gets the tawfiq to make tawbah. So these are the sections we covered in uh, two weeks ago, the black part, wisdom behind creation of shaitan. And this all falls under, under uh, the deception of shaitan. So we covered wisdom behind creation of shaitan and then devil's deception in five steps causing Adam alayhi salam and Bibi Hawa to be thrown from paradise. Number three, shaitan cannot force mankind to commit sins. He creates whisperings and uh, makes them uh, go away from the straight path. And he does it repeatedly, as long as required, until death, he tries. And the fourth section we covered two weeks ago was you can defeat shaitan. And the part, uh, the part in red is what we covered last Sunday tactics of shaitan. Shaitan is indefatigable. That means he does not tire. My goodness. Into the beginning. He does not tire. We sleep, but he does not sleep. He tries continuously, tries and tries and tries until he succeeds or the person dies with Iman to the mercy of Allah. And that needs the total mercy of Allah. We on our own do not have the ability. Allah Ta'ala has created shaitan in such a manner. You know, he's a creation of shaitan. If Allah hadn't created him, obviously he wouldn't be, uh, he wouldn't be uh, uh, alive in the first place, number one. And number two, if Allah didn't give him the powers that he has given him, that he sought when he was banished because of the tremendous worship he made to Allah, uh, for Allah Ta'ala, he wouldn't have had the powers. So Allah created him and gave him the powers. And 
made him a big test for us. It's a tremendous test for us. Paradise is not easy. We have to pay a price of it, uh, for it. And the price that we have to pay is to be to be uh, to to make effort to be saved from shaitan. We have to make that effort. Allah is going to give us the ability, but we have to make the effort. We have to ask from Him, <coughs> and then we have to make effort to suppress our base desires, and then we have to make effort to be to be uh, safe from the attractions of dunya. Dunya and the nafs are the ones that shaitan uses. And these are the three major tests in our lives uh, to be able to get Jannah. So Allah wants to see who can pass these tests. And then the reward is eternal life in Jannah. So we talked about tactics of shaitan in the last week. Shaitan is indefatigable, gradual deception to shirk that he makes us commit in a gradual manner. Exploiting weaknesses of a person, how he exploits that, we talked about that. Three sources of uh, whisperings. Two types, uh, two types of whisperings, one from, one from shaitan, the other from nafs. And there's no punishment for, for whisperings. There's no punishment if as long as we can keep it within ourselves. We do not disclose it. We do not act upon the whisperings. There's no punishment. Punishment is for action. Shaitan makes false appear, uh, shaitan makes false appear attractive. And um, in other words, he made the uh, Tree look attractive to Adam alayhi salam and Bibi Hawa, and he made the fruit look, look attractive before finally enticing them to disobey the order of Allah and finally making them forget the order of Allah. Beautify sinful action between man and woman, negligence and exaggeration. Sometimes he, when he finds us to be lazy, he makes us negligent, delayed. Oh, you will do it this time. You will pray, there is time, or your uh, business will suffer. So take time and then, then pray, and the time of prayer is over. And, and that goes for every other action. So for, for lazy people, he uh, influences them through uh, laziness, make them uh, negligent. And those who are pumped up, shaitan makes them makes them uh, exaggerate, do too much, excess. And uh, either way, he takes them away from the straight path, whether it is falling short or whether it is doing too much. It's taking away from straight path. And when people start doing too much, at one point they get fed up and they give up. Making statement about Allah without knowledge, which, uh, you know, especially the uh, worldly educated people often do without realizing and without having knowledge, without having knowledge. I mean, a doctor does not prescribe medicine without being a doctor in a particular field. And people talk about religion without having the basic understanding of religion. And that's an amazing aspect. And uh, nobody would start practicing law without being a lawyer. How can people give fatwa? without having the least knowledge of deen. <coughs> and so that is one way through which shaitan seeks to uh, influence us. We make statements about Allah without proper knowledge and makes false promises and raises high hopes. I'm going to help you as they did to the Quraysh uh, before the battle of Badr. And at the time of the battle, uh, he fled. He came in the form of Suraka, Ibn Malik, who was a very brave fighter. But I'm going to help you, and you are better than them. And you have more weapon, and you can overpower them. So raised high hopes, and then he ran away as soon as the Muslims appeared. He said, I fear Allah. 
Um, I cannot help you. He can only, you know, create whisperings. Causes people to forget commandments of Allah, fate of shaitan and followers. That's what we again reviewed before I started uh, these different subsections, showing these different subsections. And today we will talk about the largest subsection, which is means prescribed in Quran and Sunnah to dispel shaitan. And uh, this actually I found I won't be able to finish in one sitting. Uh, it will take quite a bit of time. Uh, this is close to 47 slides, which is not possible in one sitting. The, the maximum I have been able to do was in the last uh, Sunday, uh, about 40 slides. I went very rather fast, I would say. I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to hasten in this section because this section talks about things we should be doing. So if I hasten, then we don't get it. And by the way, I will post all of this for you. There are many duas which are prescribed in this section. And obviously we need to, if we know them, there's well and good. If we don't know, we can consult. I will post them in Google Drive. I did not post so, so far. I posted in the beginning because there has been so many additions and changes. And after this, um, in the next session, I won't need the full time to cover this. I will add a few uh, lessons that I learned from scholars throughout my lifetime as to how to protect from shaitan. And I will add also from the uh, materials that Tawhid sent me on protection from shaitan. So that will take me half of next section. And then I thought that, you know, we are covering about what is Islam, Islam, a complete code of life or a complete way of life. So I'm covering that. And uh, uh, in talking about that, I presented to you a framework that shows the complete uh, components of deen. And the central theme of deen, deen is to worship Allah. And uh, we have to know about Allah, who is Allah. So I went over some of the attributes of Allah that I went over in more detail earlier on, but that was six months ago. So some attributes of Allah, and then what, what is involved in worship of Allah? After we discussed that, then I thought that in worshiping Allah, the three barriers that we face, one is the uh, attraction of dunya. So to talk about that, I mentioned about the, um, the reality of dunya. And then the other barrier that we face is our own human nature, our weaknesses. So I went over the weaknesses of human nature and uh, so many of the weaknesses are covered in so many. And I, I, I came across at least hundreds, 150 plus ayahs talking about so many different uh, weaknesses of Allah, 23 plus. But then later on, I found four more. So about 30 weaknesses of Allah mentioned by, uh, weakness of human beings mentioned by Allah. And, and it could be more if somebody does more research. 30 plus weaknesses of uh, human beings mentioned by Allah. And then shaitan, uh, deceptions of shaitan. So these are the three uh, barriers that we face. Now, uh, I thought that if, if a rather comprehensive exposition of Islam, a complete way of life, will not be complete unless, I think, unless we mention about the do's and don'ts prescribed by Allah in the Quran. We can't go over all the do's and don'ts, but at least some of the major do's and don'ts. So that will that will take uh, the whole of uh, next presentation, half of it, the remaining part of the uh, means prescribed in Quran and Sunnah, and the other half uh, about the do's, some of the do's and don'ts mentioned by Allah in the Quran. And that would, I think, conclude our this uh, series of Islam, a complete way of life. So that's the roadmap for today and for the next uh, uh, Sunday. And then when we can go into how to, we can beautify our salah because that's a big protection against shaitan. And that's 
something through which Allah Ta'ala protects us from lewdness and sinful acts, from shamelessness and sinful acts. And then I have intention to go over what is it that makes us the best of nations. So <clears throat> Allah Ta'ala prescribes in terms of adhering to the straight path. Actually, Allah Ta'ala prescribes for us the straight path as a protection from shaitan. So when we adhere, stick to the Quran and Sunnah in words and deeds, and this is, I added it, and thought. So, so Quran and the Sunnah, these are the greatest protection from from shaitan. And these provide us adherence to the straight path. When we are on the straight path, we are protected from shaitan. So it is as simple as that, but you know, shaitan has ways to derail us from the straight path. So what else should we do? We always try to hold on to the Quran and the Sunnah. Those were some, some of the last things that Rasulullah said, hold on to the rope. And what is the rope? Quran and Sunnah. And, and basically, Sunnah is explanation of the Quran. The way through which Rasulullah followed the Quran is his Sunnah. When somebody asked Aisha, uh, how do we follow the Quran? Something to, to that effect. I don't remember the exact words. And Aisha has said, don't you see the life of the Prophet Sallallahu He is like a moving Quran. So when we follow his life, his sunnah, his ways, we are following the Quran. He was a living Quran, a moving Quran. He sought to put the orders of Allah into practice. And, and there are Muslims who say, oh, this is sunnah. There are people when a dollar drops on the ground, they will pick it up. But when they drop a sunnah, they would not have any qualms about it. But the sunnah of Rasulullah is so exalted. It is said in one hadith, in one narration, that at a time when Muslims do not practice on sunnah. If somebody enlivens jinda kore, a, a sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which has gone out of practice, he will get the reward of one shaheed, one martyr, battlefield martyr. That much of value Allah Ta'ala gives to the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imam Ahmed Ibn Hanbal recorded that Abdullah bin Masood said, Rasulullah drew a line with his hand in the sand and said, this is Allah's path leading straight. And then drew lines to the right and left of that line and said, these are the other paths. On each path, there is a shaitan who calls to it. He then recited, and verily, this is my straight path. So follow it and follow not other paths for they will separate you away from his path from Allah's path. A man once asked Ibn Masood, radiallahu anhu, what is Siratul Mustaqim? And Ibn Masood, radiallahu anhu, replied, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left us at its lower end of the straight path, and its other end is in paradise. The path that will take us in the easiest manner to paradise. To the right of this path are other paths, and to the left of it are other paths. And there are men on these paths calling those who pass by them. Whoever goes on the other paths will end up in the fire. Whoever takes the straight path will end up in paradise. Ibn Masood then recited the verse that is mentioned in the previous slide. 
And I mentioned to you earlier under this slide that this is the, this is the easiest path to paradise. And on the other hand, Dean appears difficult to us. You know, it is in human nature to obey Allah. It is in the fitrat of the human being to obey Allah. Why? Because the ruh is in us and the ruh is from Allah and the ruh wants to obey Allah. Ru the food of the, of the ruh is the, the remembrance and the obedience of Allah. Now we have become attuned to a life, used to a life which is away from deen away from deen, and as a result, we get used to not following deen, and that's why deen becomes difficult to us, because we are not used to it. On the other hand, we, we do in life things which are much more difficult than praying five times. And basically, as, as far as the order of Allah is concerned, for 11 months, it is only two orders, actually, keeping our level of iman high and keeping our I mean, obligatory orders. There are other do's and don'ts. I, I shouldn't uh, discount those. But in terms of the most important obligatory acts, it is keeping the level of Iman high, number one, number two, the five prayers, which hardly take one hour. And that becomes difficult. Whereas we are doing much more difficult things than praying five times a day in our daily life. And these five prayers... Forget the other do's and don'ts. These five players become difficult because we are not used to, many of us, I'm not talking about this group of brothers. I'm talking about Muslims in general, not used to the five prayers. If they're used to it, it will become easy. So just because we are not used to it, these prayers become or appear difficult. We are not used to telling the truth. It becomes difficult to tell the truth all the time. We are not used to, to uh, honesty. That's why it becomes difficult. If you are used to all these orders of Allah, they will become easy because it's in the fitrat of human being to be just, to be uh, truthful, to be honest. It is in the fitrat. It is in the nature. And that brings the food for the nafs. And then the nafs becomes strong when it gets food. And when the nafs gets strong, it becomes easier for us to obey the orders of Allah. The nafs is in the driver's seat, is on, on the horse. The nafs drives us. Otherwise, if we feed our baser instinct, sorry, uh, the, the, the rule. When I said nafs, I meant rule. When the nafs becomes strong, when it gets food, when we eat properly, and that's what we do, basically, the nafs become strong, and that makes us stray away from the straight path, follow our urgings, our nafsaniyat. So it is in the fitrat of the human being to obey Allah. What happened? Allah has instructed. And if an evil whisperer comes to you from shaitan or seeking refuge in Allah, this is a new section, subsection, Allah has instructed, and if an, if an evil whisper comes to you from shaitan, then seek refuge with Allah and say, my Lord, I seek refuge with you from the whisperings of the shaitan, shayateen, plural, and I seek refuge with you, my Lord, lest they may attend or come near me. Ibn Kathir writes, istiyada, seeking refuge, means I seek refuge with Allah from the cursed shaitan so that he is prevented from affecting my religious or worldly affairs or hindering me from adhering to what I was commanded or luring me into what I was prohibited from. Indeed, only Allah is able to prevent the evil of shaitan from touching the son of Adam. It's a very profound, important statement. Only Allah is able to prevent us from the evil of shaitan. How much we seek the help of Allah, how much we understand, how much we understand how much shaitan is after us. Most Muslims do not even realize that. 
That's the saddest part of it. And I wrote in the, in the, uh, in the group today, early this morning, when the thought came to me that countries spend cumulatively build trillions of dollars in defense against enemies. They want to study their enemies. What are the strengths of the enemies, the weaknesses of the enemies? And they have strategies and tactics against the enemies. Whereas we do not know, realize that shaitan is our greatest enemy. And even if we know that, we do not know how he can seek to derail us, to take us away from the straight path. And if, even if we know that, I guess most people don't know, and whoever knows that, how much careful he is in his 24 hour life as to when and how shaitan is coming to attack me it, and, and uh, take me away from my straight path or spoil my worship completely. Who is so particular about Rhea showing off in worship? Or who is so particular about about uh, the um, arrogance of piety, for example. People worship so much. Those who are worshiping, they worship so much, they forget or they do not realize when they have become arrogant in their worship. So only Allah can, can, prevent, can help us to keep away from shaitan and to him do we submit at all times. So this is why Allah allowed us to be lenient and kind with the human devil. So you have devil in the shaitan from the jinn and you have devil in the form of human beings. Those who have been totally uh, uh, taken over by shaitan and shaitan uses them to mislead us. Those are called human devil. So that our soft nature might cause him to refrain from the evil he's indulging in. So Allah Ta'ala wants us to be lenient towards human beings causing mischief so that our soft nature can cause him to refrain from evil he's indulging in. He may be attracted towards the good. However, Allah required us to seek refuge with him from the evil of shaitan because he neither accepts bribe nor does kindness affect him. Because he's pure evil. Auzubillah. Thus only he who created shaitan is able to stop his evil. As I said earlier, shaitan has created him and has given him a lot of power. Lot of power. Beyond our imagination. He can flow through our body like the bloodstream. And he can create whisperings in a manner we think it is us and it is for our good if we do those forbidden things. And he does those in different stages as we discussed in the previous uh, uh, session. Islam teaches us to seek refuge with Allah in certain situations such as those mentioned in the following few pages. A through S. A through S, 19 situations are described. That's why this, this section is so lengthy. So dispelling shaitan any time of day or night. This all falls under seeking refuge with Allah. First tactics given to us is dispelling shaitan any time of day or night. Previously, in last Sunday, we came to know about the tactics of shaitan. And now we are prescribed tactics against shaitan. The first one is dispelling shaitan any time of day or night. Rasulullah said, whoever says in the morning, la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahul mulku wa lahul hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. I guess all of us know this, but it's just a matter of reciting these in the morning and in the evening. And the meaning is none has the right to be worshiped except Allah alone. He has no partners. To him belongs the dominion Sovereignty. To him belongs all praise, and he is over all things powerful, omnipotent. Has indeed gained, what's the reward of it? Has indeed gained the reward of freeing 10 slaves from the children of Ismail, and 10 of his sins are wiped away, and he's raised 10 degrees, and each degree has a 
uh, uh, width of the earth and the sky. Each degree has a width of the heavens and the earth. He's raised 10 degrees and has found a safe retreat from the shaitan until evening. Similarly, if he says in the evening, he will be protected until the morning. Ibn Majah. One of the six books of Hadith which are considered to be, to be uh, verified. So look at the, once again, the first of the rewards mentioned, the reward of freeing 10 slaves from the children of Ismail alayhi salam. La ilaha illallah wahtahu la sharika lahu lahul mulku wa lahul hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Saying once or twice, the number is not mentioned, so by default it is once. But there's no harm in saying twice or thrice. Who knows that uh, the first time we said, we said it properly, meaning with full attention and full devotion, which is required. And saying that once or twice in the evening will we'll take us how much time? Just a few seconds. And we'll be protected from shaitan from morning till evening or from evening till the next morning. The second uh, prescription is dispelling. How, how do we dispel shaitan from our house? Abu Huraira Raziallahu who reported that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not turn your houses into graves. Indeed, shaitan flees from a house in which Surah Al-Baqarah is recited. Now that is difficult. That is difficult. But in other places, you know, it is mentioned uh, that shaitan leaves a house where Quran is recited. And yet, somewhere else I saw, if you recite the last two surahs, uh, sorry, last two ayat of Surah Baqarah, Amana Rasulu bima unzila rabbihi wal mu'minun, the last two surahs, even that will su suffice. Because, you know, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knows that nobody will be able to recite, or not many people will be able to recite Surah Baqarah every day to drive away shaitan. Last two surahs, uh, ayats, or just reciting the Quran and reciting loudly is more preferred than reciting uh, within the heart. Dispelling at time of anger. Suleiman Ibn Sard said, anhu, I was sitting with Rasulullah and two men were abusing each other. The face of one of them became red out of anger and his veins had become inflated. Rasulullah said, I know a word which if he was to say, his anger would leave him. If he said, I seek refuge in Allah from shaitan, the accursed, auzu billahi minash shaitan rajim his anger would leave him. Dispelling before food, drink, and entering house. Actually, there's one more point I wanted to mention with regard to this one, which is once Rasulullah was sitting with Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, when a person, a sahabi came and started abusing Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu with anger. Obviously, abuse can only be done with anger. Abu Huraira, uh, sorry, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu uh, kept quiet and the man kept on abusing him. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu kept quiet. At one point, he could not withhold his anger. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu retorted, responded. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa left the place. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu ran after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and asked him, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa why did you leave? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, as long as you were quiet, I could see shaitan standing at some distance. He could not come near the gathering. When you started talking, that means that's a door to argumentation. Shaitan came near the gathering and I left. Dispelling before food, drink, and entering house, Jabir radiallahu anhu said, I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi say, when a man enters his house and remembers Allah, the exalted, upon entering and before eating food, shaitan says, there is no place for you to spend the night and there is no supper for you. 
when he enters the house and does not remember Allah, it means the man, shaitan says, or it could be a woman, shaitan says, you have found a place to spend the night. And when he does not remember Allah upon eating his food, that means the man or the woman, shaitan says, you have found a place to stay and have some supper. So the Sahabi quarreling uh, is a reference to the previous uh, slide. So uh, what we learn from this is when we enter the house, we enter by remembering Allah. And when we start eating food, we start eating food by remembering Allah. And there are other more elaborate sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, more other duas that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi taught us when we enter house or when we leave the house, uh, we say Bismillah or we say Salam. Whether there's anybody or not, we say Salam. And uh, we say Ayatul Kursi. And, and the same thing when we, uh, when we leave the house, we say Ayatul Kursi. And then we say Bismillah, Tawakkal, Tuwalallah, Wala Hawla, Wala Quwata, Illa Billah, Illa Lila Azim. When we leave the house and we'll get protection from from Allah, when we recite Ayatul Kursi, we get protection from Allah when we leave the house. And uh, when we enter the house and recite Ayatul Kursi or give Salam or enter with Bismillah, uh, we also get protection from, from Allah, from Shaitan. And uh, when we wash the hand and we eat food with Bismillah before eating food, for both cases, it is mentioned that Shaitan says these things. Washing the hand. Oh, there's no food for you. Or eating with Bismillah. Shaitan says there's no food for you. Meaning to other uh, shayateen. So these are various sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not just saying uh, Bismillah before eating, but also, you know, washing the hand is a sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before eating food. Dispelling before food, drink, and entering house. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has commanded us to protect our wealth by mentioning the name of Allah by locking doors and covering vessels, by locking doors, especially at night. Say Bismillah or Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, even better. In Muslim, it is narrated that Jabir bin Abdullah Razilullah who said, the Rasulullah said, lock your doors and mention the name of Allah for sh the shaitan cannot open a locked door. Seal your water skins and mention the name of Allah. Cover your vessels and mention the name of Allah. And even if you lay something across the top of it, cover it and extinguish your lamps before going to sleep. Also, one should drink while sitting because shaitan drinks with a person who drinks standing up. For, for uh, the educated, so-called educated person, you know, standing and, e and drinking or standing and eating has become a, is a fashion. It is narrated from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that Rasulullah sallallahu saw a man drinking standing up. He said to him, ha, the man asked, what's the matter? He said, would you like it if a cat drank with you? He said, no. Rasulullah sallallahu said, someone worse than that was drinking with you, the shaitan. And by the way, there is also instance where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam drank while standing, but that was out of necessity. As a rule, he drank water uh, sitting. When one, uh, when you are about to eat, you should say Bismillah. In the name of Allah, I begin. And if you forget to say it before starting, then you should say, when you remember, Bismillah. We are eating and we remember, oh, I forgot to say Bismillah. We should say this. Bismillah. In the name of Allah, in its beginning and the end. What a beautiful dua. Allah Ta'ala, what it means basically is that I am eating in the name of Allah from the beginning to the end. Though I forgot to say Bismillah in the beginning. Bismillah awwaluhu wa akhirahu. Jabir radiallahu anhu said, I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, the shaitan is present with one of you in everything that he does, even when he's eat, eating. So he drops a piece of food, let him remove any dirt that may be on it, then eat it 
and do not leave it for the shaitan. And when he has finished eating, let him lick his fingers, for he does not know in which part of his food the blessing is. And this also goes uh, for eating every particle of food on the plate. Wiping the, the plate and eating because you do not know where blessing is. And then the other thing that is not mentioned either in the previous page or in this page uh, is that we should wash our face, uh, our hands. Dispelling before going to bed. The Sulla said, when you are about to sleep, recite Ayatul Kursi till the end of the verse, for there will remain over you a protection from Allah and no shaitan will draw near to you until morning. And there's a lengthy hadith on this from uh, Abu Bakr, anhu, which I think we mentioned earlier. Abu Huraira, anhu. Dispelling upon a, a nightmare. Uh, dispelling upon a nightmare. When we see a nightmare, what should we do? Rasulullah informed us, dreams are of three kinds. Glad tidings from the most merciful, those which come from one's own self, and frightening dreams from shaitan. So if any one of you has a dream that he likes, then it is from Allah. So let him praise Allah for it and tell others about it. If he has something other than that, which he dislikes, that is from shaitan. So let him seek refuge with Allah from its evil and not mention it to anyone, for it will not harm him. And actually what is mentioned is, I think it is mentioned later, that when we see a bad dream, a nightmare, we should say, Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim three times, three times, and then turn to the left when we wake up because of a nightmare. Say, Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim three times, turn to the left, turn the face to the left and do the act of spitting, not spitting itself, but do the act of spitting and the shaitan will go away and there'll be no harm from the dream. Dispelling when approaching wife. Ibn Abbas reports that Rasulullah said, if one of you says when approaching his wife for intercourse, Bismillah, Allahumma jannibna shaitana wa jannibi shaitana ma razaktana. In the name of Allah, O oh Allah, make us distant from shaitan and make shaitan distant from us, from what you bestow upon us. O oh Allah, make us distant from shaitan and make shaitan distant from what you bestow upon us. Then if it is decreed that they should have a child as a result of that, the shaitan will never be able to harm it. That means the offspring. So let us uh, reflect upon this and see if we, so many Muslims act on it. And then uh, there, there are so many children born when this sunnah has not been performed. And so many children have fallen easy prey to shaitan. Dispelling when entering washroom. Zaid ibn Arkam who narrated that Rasulullah said, these places are inhabited by devils, the washroom. So when any of you enters the washroom, let him say, Allahumma inni awzu bika min al khubthi wal khabaythi. Khubthi wal khabaythi. Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from the male and female devils. And Allah will protect him when he enters the washroom. Guaranteed. Dispelling when entering masjid. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anh, who said when Rasulullah used to enter the masjid, he would say, and there are other, you know, there are other duas for virtually each one of them. Only one is mentioned. Auzu hil azimi wabi wajhi hil karimi and these have such beautiful meanings. I seek refuge with Allah, the mighty, with his noble face. He doesn't have a face like us. And with his eternal authority from shaitan, the accursed. I seek refuge from shaitan. 
He then said, when a man says this, Shaitan says, he has been protected from me for the whole day. Dispelling during prayer, Uthman bin Abil As came to Rasulullah and said, the shaitan comes between me and my prayer and recitation of the Quran and he's confusing me. The messenger said, that is the devil called Khinzab. If you notice that, then seek refuge with Allah from him and spit dryly to your left three times. The one that I mentioned, Auzu Billah Minash Shaitan Rajim three times and then uh, turning to the left and do the act of spitting. Uh, spitting. And I heard from a, a scholar that whenever any whispering comes to us uh, that is bad and whisperings are bad, we should, we should do this act of saying Auzu Billah Minash Shaitan Rajim three times and turn to the left and do the act of spitting three times, two, two, two. The evil thought will go away, will vanish, and that is guaranteed. And uh, the, sahabi, the Sahabi said, I did that and Allah took care of him from me. Shaitan enters into the gaps in the rows and creates enmity between Muslims, so we should not leave gaps between rows in Salah. Dispelling during prayer, Rasulullah said, stand close together, close the gaps and line up your shoulders because by him who has my soul in his hands, I see the shaitan coming into the gaps between the rows like a missile. Do not walk in front of a person praying. Abu Sa'id who said, I heard the messenger of Allah say, if any one of you prays towards something that screens him from the people and someone wants to pass directly in front of him, <clears throat> right in front of him. Let him push him back, push that person back, the intruder back. If he insists, then fight him, for he is nothing but a devil. And Ibn Hajar explained, for he is nothing but a devil, it may be the meaning is that the one who is making him do that, that means walk in front of the person who's praying, uh, the devil is making him do the person, uh, person walk in front of the person who's praying. The devil is making him do that. Meaning that the person who's walking may not be a devil, but the devil is making him walk in front of the person praying. Something similar is narrated by Muslim from the hadith of Ibn Omar where it says, for he has a kareem, uh, which we talked about in the previous session, jinn companion with him. Dispelling before reciting the Quran. So when you want to recite the Quran, Allah says, seek refuge with Allah from shaitan, the out, outcast, the cursed one. So whenever we start reciting the Quran, whether by looking at the Quran or from memory, we should say, Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. And, and the reason given, I've, I've not uh, uh, put the reason here, the reason given is the Quran one reason that is given is that the Quran is to benefit us. And by, uh, by uh, polluting us when we are reciting the Quran, shaitan doesn't want us to get the benefit. For example, the, the Quran is like shifa for the believers. He doesn't want that benefit to come to us. The Quran is guidance for the believer. He doesn't want us to get that benefit of the Quran. The Quran is essentially uh, the Quran is essential to the guidance, knowledge, and goodness of the heart. Just as water is essential to the growth of plants, the shaitan is fire, which burns the plants one after another. The more he feels that the seeds of goodness are growing in the heart, the more he strives to corrupt it and burn it. So we seek refuge from the shaitan. Dispelling when leaving the house. Anas radiallahu anhu reports that Rasulullah said, whoever says when he leaves his house, Bismillahi tawakkaltu alallahi wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. In the name of Allah, I place my trust upon Allah. There is no power nor movement or ability except by Allah. 
it is said to him, you have been sufficed, you have been protected, and you have been guided. Then one of the devils turned to another and says, how can you get to a man who has been sufficed, protected, and guided? Dispelling when stopping on a journey, Rasulullah said, if any one of you stops to rest on a journey and says, I seek refuge in the perfect words of Allah from the evil of what he has created. From all the creation of Allah, I seek his refuge. From the evil of his creation, I seek his refuge. That's the uh, rough meaning. Then nothing in that place will harm him until he moves on from there. Dispelling shaitan when calamity befalls. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reports that Rasulullah said, the strong believer is more loved by Allah than the weak believer, but in both there is goodness. Be zealous, not jealous, be zealous for what will benefit you. Seek help from Allah, the mighty and majestic, and do not become incapacitated. If something afflicts you, do not say, if only I had done such and such act, but say, Kadar Allahu Wama Shaa Fa'ala. Fa Allah. Allah has decreed this and He does whatever He wills. Indeed, saying if opens the doorway of Shaitan's handiwork. Dispelling Shaitan from your children, Jabir ibn Abdullah Raziallah, who said, Rasulullah said, when night befalls or when the evening comes, keep your children inside for the shayateen spread out his this time in the evening. Keep your children inside. Then one hour of the night has passed or something to that effect. Allow them to go out. Reciting last two surahs. Uh, let's uh, possibly let's finish with this one. Let's see what we have in the next slide. Last, two, last three surahs. Okay. Abu Sayyid who said Rasulullah used to seek refuge from the jinn and from the effects of the evil of men until the Muadda sign, until the Muadda sign were revealed. When they were revealed, he clung to them and abandoned what was besides them. And here it is with reference to the last two surahs, Surah Falak and Surah Nas. It was narrated from Uqba ibn Amir radiallahu anhu that Rasulullah sallallahu said, do you not seek the verses, do you not see the verses that were revealed to me tonight, the like of which have never been seen? Kul a'udhu bi rabbil falak, kul a'udhu bi rabbin nas. Reciting last two surahs, this continuation of the previous slide, according to one report, Rasulullah sallallahu said to Ibn Abbas al-Juhani, the best of words which one can seek refuge with Allah are the Muaddatain. And according to some versions of the Hadith of Uqba, the messenger said, no one can ask Allah by means of anything like them, nor seek refuge by means of anything like them. And this is a continuation, so let me finish this part. Uh, narrated Aisha radiallahu anha, when Rasulullah went to bed every night, he would cup his palms together and blow in them after reciting the last three chapters. So that's why, you know, uh, right above I said last two and within bracket three surahs, because in one place two of the surahs are mentioned, the last two, and in uh, here the last three surahs are mentioned. So Aisha radiallahu anha is saying that before going to bed, he would cup his palms together and blow in them after reciting the last three chapters of the Quran and then wipe over his entire body as much as possible with his hands, beginning with his head and face and front part of the body and then the back part. He used to do this three times a day. He also advised Uqba ibn Amir to recite these after each obligatory prayer. Abdullah ibn Khubayb who said, the messenger of Allah said to me, recite 
I replied, O Messenger of Allah, what shall I recite? He replied, recite Surah Ikhlas, Surah Falak, and Surah An-Nas in the evening and in the morning three times, for it will suffice for you all else, that means throughout the day. So let's finish with Q. And then uh, after finishing the remaining part, uh, there'll be some more uh, reminders that uh, came to my mind from scholars that I heard over the, over the years. And I'll take some more help from the materials that uh, Tawhid sent, and then the do's and don'ts in the Quran. And that would be in the next um, Sunday, on the next Sunday. And uh, that would, I think, close this series. And we'll move on to the next series. May Allah Ta'ala accept. I want to remind once again about all our brothers who are suffering different ways. Musharraf in PG Hospital. Sayyid Musharraf Ali by now possibly has been admitted to uh, Kurmitola General Hospital because uh, no seat could be found for him at uh, PG. Um, and uh, Byron's family, Byron is uh, Mukaddam's uh, neighbor. Um, I think he's still neighbor. He used to be Mukaddam's neighbor. Eight of his family members are affected, including his wife and daughter. And Brigadier General Nasimul Ghani, Bobby, 12th batch. His wife is in, uh, what is that called? Life support. She's not in her senses. Her um, platelet level came down to 1,000. And, she, and uh, uh, his uh, his uh, son is also affected badly. His daughter is affected, and his father-in-law, Major General, retired Ram Gulam Muktadir. The, the, once upon a time, he was a famous person, a freedom fighter. Uh, he is also uh, in HDU of CMH. So he's also in critical condition. And there are others who, whom we, whom, about whom we do not know about and our relatives. So we pray for all of them for the safety of, of uh, all our um, relatives, our, uh, our, uh, our children, our relatives, our neighbors, our countrymen, and our uh, people of the world. We pray for safety of all of them. And, and first and foremost, the guidance of all of them. <coughs> we are not guided. We're far away from deen. We are committing openly shameless acts. And it is not surprising that the countries that fall most under that, committing open shame, shameless acts and lewdness and sinful acts, openly, they are the ones that are the most affected. May Allah Ta'ala guide all of us. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Jazallahu anna Muhammad. Salallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ma huwa akhiru. Wa anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta alayka tawakkat. Wa anta rabbul arshi kareem. Ma sha Allahu kana wa ma lam. Talam Bakun Bala Hala Vala Kuat La Billa Hila Lila Zima Lamana Laha La Kulisha in Kadir and the Laka Dahata Bikulisha in Ilma Lahuma in the Auzu become in Shari Nafsi women Shari Kulita but in Anta Akadum bin Asiatiha in the Rabbi Allah Sirati Mustakim. Lahuma Salu come in Khaira Masala come in Hunabuka Mohammed Salah Salam and Auzu become in Shari Mustaza come in Hunabuka Mohammed Salah Salamatal Mustan, Valikal Bala Bala Hola Bala Kuat, La Villa Hilal Azim, Rabbana in Nana Samina Munadi Ayuna di Lilimani and Anna Mubi Rabbi Kumfam and Rabbana Fakfil Lana Zulubada, Wakafir and Nasayat in Avatawa Fanama, Labra, Rabbana Fakfil Lana Zulubana, Wakafir and Nasayat in Avatawa Fanama, Labra, Rabbana Wahat in Ama, Watana Lansunika Walatu in a Yamal Kamat in Nakalatu for me. Walla, Walla, Walla to me, Amade Kajakichu. Amul Korar to fig the so Ebong Jakichu, Polar emotional to fig the so Tar Bud Franti Shamshudon Gure to Marshai, Torbari Kubul Koro, Ebong Tarso Abrus, the Krim Salalal of Salam Casipochidio, Ebong Shamos the Muslim Casipochidio, Ebong Vishesh Kore, Amade Prio, John Nikor, John Apon, John Jarakobur Shaito, Allah to meet Tadakasipochidio, 
তাদের কবরের আজাব মাফ করো যদি মাফ করে না থাকো আল্লাহ তুমি তাদের কবরকে প্রশস্ত করো আল্লাহ তুমি তাদের কবরকে জান্নাতুল ফেরদৌসের বাগান বানিয়ে দিও তুমি তাদের কবরকে নুন দিয়ে পরিপূর্ণ করে দিও আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ তুমি তাদের দরজা উঁচু করো আল্লাহ এবং তাদের দরজা উঁচু করো কেমতের দিন আমল নামার ডান হাতে দিও আর সে নিচে ছায়া দিও বিদ্যুতের গতিতে চোখের নিমিষে পুলসেরাত পার হওয়ার তৌফিক দান করো আল্লাহ এবং বিনা হিসাবে জান্নাতুল ফেরদৌসে দাখিল করো আল্লাহ হেদায়ত দাও আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদেরকে হেফাজত করো আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদেরকে রহমত করো আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ তোমার মাকসেরাজ চাই আল্লাহ না হলে আমরা তো হালাক হয়ে যাব আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ দুনিয়াতে এবং আখেরাতে তোমাকে আমরা চিনতে পারিনি যেরকম চেনা উচিত ছিল আল্লাহ তোমার হুকুম মানতে পারিনি যেরকম মানা উচিত ছিল আল্লাহ তোমাকে সন্তুষ্ট করতে পারিনি যেরকম সন্তুষ্ট করা উচিত ছিল তোমার ভালোবাসা আমাদের অন্তরে আনতে পারিনি যেরকম ভালোবাসা থাকা উচিত ছিল তুমি এগুলো আমাদেরকে দান করো আল্লাহ তুমি ক্ষমাকারী আল্লাহ তুমি ছাড়া কেউ ক্ষমাকারী নাই তুমি সাহায্যকারী তুমি ছাড়া কেউ সাহায্যকারী নাই আল্লাহ তুমি ক্ষমতাবান তুমি ছাড়া কেউ ক্ষমতাবান নাই আল্লাহ তুমি পরাক্রমশালী তুমি ছাড়া কেউ পরাক্রমশালী নাই আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদেরকে নফসে থেকে এবং শয়তানের থেকে এবং দুনিয়ার চাকরিকে থেকে রক্ষা করতে পারো আল্লাহ একমাত্র তুমি পারো আল্লাহ প্রতিটা মুহূর্তে আমাদের হাত ধরে কবর পর্যন্ত পৌঁছে দিও আল্লাহ এবং এবং মৃত্যুর সময় যাতে শয়তান আমাদেরকে ধোকায় না ফেলতে পারে আল্লাহ কলে মা সহজাতে মরতে পারি আল্লাহ তোমার সন্তুষ্টি সহজাতে জীবন যাপন করতে পারি এবং তোমার সন্তুষ্টি সহজাতে আমাদের মৃত্যু হয় আল্লাহ যাতে কবরে এবং হাসরের ময়দানে এবং পুষ্যরা পার হতে তোমার সর্বোত্তম ব্যবহার আমরা পেতে পারি এবং জন্নাতুল ফেরদোস দাখিল হতে পারি আল্লাহ আল্লাহ তুমি আমাদেরকে তৌফিক দাও আল্লাহ আমাদের বিভিন্ন জনের নেক হাজত আছে আল্লাহ নেক চাওয়া আছে তোমার কাছে আল্লাহ তুমি জানো আল্লাহ তুমি তাদের নেক চাওয়া পূরণ করো যদি পৃথিবীতে ক্ষতিকর হয় তুমি আল্লাহ আমাদের মধ্যে বা আমাদের আত্মীয় স্বজনের মধ্যে যারা বিপদের মধ্যে আছে আমাদের বন্ধু বান্ধব যাদের কথা আগে বলেছি আল্লাহ তুমি তাদেরকে হেফাজত করো আল্লাহ ফিরোজ সবার কাছে দোয়া চেয়েছে আল্লাহ ও আল্লাহ তুমি তাকে হেফাজত করো এবং অন্যান্য যারা বিপদ আপদের মধ্যে আছে বা আত্মীয় স্বজন বা বন্ধু বান্ধব যারা বিপদের মধ্যে আছে আল্লাহ তুমি তাদের সবাইকে তুমি হেফাজত করো আল্লাহ এবং হেদায়ত করো ফেরাত করো আল্লাহ আমরা সবাই তোমার তোমার মুখাপেক্ষি আল্লাহ তোমার প্রার্থী আল্লাহ আমরা ফকির তুমি বাদশাহ আল্লাহ আমরা দুর্বল তুমি ক্ষমতাশালী আল্লাহ প্রয়োজন আমাদের সমস্ত নির্যাতন তুমি বন্ধ করো আল্লাহ কত মানুষ কত ভাবে দুনিয়াতে কষ্টের মধ্যে আছে তাদের সাহায্যকারী আল্লাহ তুমি একমাত্র তাদের সাহায্যকারী আল্লাহ আল্লাহ <laughs> يا قاضي الحاجات يا رافي الدرجات يا حلال المشكلات يا موجب الدعوات برحمتك نستغيث يا أول الأول بين يا آخر الآخر بين يا أكرم الأكرم يا رحم الرحم يا رحم النسكين يا زي القوة المتين يا زي القوة المتين ربنا تقبل من إنك أنت السميع العليم والله تمارك سجاكي شجاو جيتشلو جاي تباريني تمي تمار طرف تيك دان كرو والله تمار تيك تمار تيك جاكي شو تيك তোমার কাছে যা কিছু থেকে পানা চাওয়া উচিত ছিল চাইতে পারি নাই তোমার 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 তরফ থেকে তুমি পানা দান করো আল্লাহ তুমি মালিক জুল জালি বলিক রাম আজিজুল জব্বার মুতাকাব্য কালিকুল বারি আল মুসাবের আকমুর রাহমি রবীন্দ্রনাথ <laughs> <laughs>